there's some big changes happening to YouTube and it could jeopardize thousands of channels. Doesn't this happen like every single week? This time it's different because it could potentially impact my channel, so I actually care now. <laughs> Basically, YouTube is going to be rolling out in a few months a separate kid-friendly part of their site where videos that are designated by the creator to be for an audience of 13 and under children or videos that are scanned by the algorithm and determined to be child-friendly content will be relegated to this kind of kid YouTube where personalized ads are stripped and comments and ratings are disabled. A robot could easily scan my channel and determine it's kid friendly because all the thumbnails are of bright colored cartoons. My problem is I don't want my videos only being distributed to an audience of children 13 and under because I would like to talk about adult animation and the history of adult animation on this channel. So in the interest of keeping my channel from being flagged as a total kids channel, I wanted to talk about something slightly adult, the history that cartoons have played in advertising cigarettes throughout the years. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not a smoker, I have never been a smoker, I will never be a smoker, and I think smoking is a disgusting habit, and if you smoke, you should quit, and all of my friends and family, that goes double because I love you and I want you to live forever. But you know what, we all have our vices, so grab yourself your own personal favorite vice, be it a snack or a drink of choice, get comfortable, and get ready to watch some controversial cartoons. I originally intended to make this video just about Joe Camel to keep the video focused on one mascot, but he never actually appeared in anything animated, just in print advertisements for legal reasons we'll talk about later. So we'll get back to Joe Camel, but let's also talk about some other cartoons and mascots used to push puffing on cigarettes. Advertising of all kinds has a long history of using illustrated work to sell products, but the first example I could find of a really cartoony character versus a stylized illustration of a person was this British ad for St. Dunstan's featuring a cartoony child smoking a comically huge cigarette. Sometime between then and the early 30s, companies decided to go full cartoon and made comic strips featuring various characters and mascots advertising the benefits of their cigarettes. The three main companies responsible for these comics were Doral, Cool, and Camel, and they all seemed to be published around 1933. Interestingly, Camel's comics didn't feature any camels at all. This comic story is about the guy getting fooled by a magic trick, learning how it works, and then he talks about the facts about camels, implying that other brands are using trickery and that camels are the no BS brand of mild, high quality cigarette. It also shows you how to do a quote unquote magic trick. Conveniently, this trick involves getting you to purchase a pack of camel cigarettes. Doral's ads all feature the pack of cigarettes dancing around various people singing, taste me, taste me. Interestingly, they never use the more accurate, but perhaps more gross, smoke me. The cutest and funniest comics, and therefore the most unsettling to me, were made by Cool, introducing their penguin mascot Willie and his girlfriend Millie. You could even order the pair of penguins on adorable salt and pepper shakers. These comics are extra funny because they present smoking Cool cigarettes as a cure for sneezing and coughing, which I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's not how cigarettes work. Cool centered most of its marketing around its cool sensation from the menthol in their cigarettes, hence the penguin mascot. Keeping things cool, in 1935, perhaps the most interesting advertising I ran across was produced. This six minute and change advertisement for cool cigarettes was directed by Flusher Studios animator John Walworth. You may be familiar with Flusher Studios other productions like Betty Boop or Popeye. This cartoon is insane. It has all the retro appeal of any cutesy old style cartoon, but with a full several minute scene showing the manufacturing process of cigarettes using these penguins. And perhaps the funniest thing that I found, which was giving the Statue of Liberty a cigarette and then having her light it with the torch. I genuinely burst out laughing the first time I saw this because it's just really out there and something you would never see today. This, this whole cartoon is so good. I'm probably going to use this B-roll for the rest of the video, but I urge you to check out the full video if you're as interested in weird old cartoons as I am. Cool carried on advertising their cigarettes as the cool, refreshing choice in posters and in further TV advertisements through the late 50s, but the little penguin left a lasting impact. Willie wearing a top hat and monocle was actually the inspiration for Batman's penguin character. His success as a mascot also surely inspired other cigarette companies to use cartoons in their TV advertising. In the late 50s and early 60s, we see animated cigarette ads from Marlboro, Camel again without any camels, and a rather uncomfortable ad for consulate cigarettes where a guy gets his lung strength back from, you guessed it, smoking, and then beats up a bunch of Native Americans to win his very jiggly gal's heart. Most notably in the 60s was a series of advertisements for Winston cigarettes featuring the Flintstones. 
These you've probably seen before. They're fairly well known nowadays for being a shocking use of cartoons to advertise smoking, though I think it's a little bit unfair to call it shocking since it's also fairly well known that The Flintstones was at first intended to be a sitcom for a more adult audience, modeled after The Honeymooners. The Flintstones was even the first TV couple to be depicted sharing a bed, scandalous and very adult for the times. Despite these cigarette commercials and the attempt to market the show for adults, later The Flintstones became known as more of a family or kids show and they later became salespeople for kids vitamins, cereal, and grape juice. It was all fun and games for cartoons and cigarettes through the 60s, though there was some pushback in the form of anti-smoking cartoons, perhaps most notably a PSA put out in 1964 by the American Cancer Society called The Huffless Puffless Dragon, showing the negative impact smoking can have. You can fight. You're out of breath. Your lungs are out. You're through. That's what smoking will do. The PSA was produced by animator and director Ernest Pintoff, most known for his Oscar award-winning abstract short, The Critic, featuring Mel Brooks. This public pushback continued for many years in America until finally the U.S. government decided to step in. In 1970, President Richard Nixon signed the Public Health Cigarette Smoking Act, which banned all cigarette advertisements from television and radio. This didn't ban ads for smokeless tobacco products, which weren't banned until 1986, but the tobacco industry was really hit where it hurt, right in their wallets. Undeterred, companies found ways to implement bolder marketing strategies in print advertisements and on billboards, which is where our old friend Joe comes in. Joe Camel was created in 1974 by Nicholas Price, a British artist who I couldn't find any details about online. The first Joe was made for a French ad campaign for Camel. Price's inspiration was the Camel logo named Old Joe, and can I just say it's kind of shocking to me just how long it took Camel to use a Camel mascot in its ads? Anyway, the Joe that we know wouldn't hit the United States until 1988. The parent company of Camel Cigarettes, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, hired ad agency Trone Advertising to create a campaign for the 75th anniversary of Camel Cigarettes. They proposed a design featuring the Camel from the earlier French ad, It Got the Green Light, and a design with Joe's face rolled out for the anniversary with the phrase, 75 years and still smoking. This design and all the subsequent 75th anniversary designs were a huge hit, and Joe became the face of the brand with his own slogan, Smooth Character. Joe was featured looking cool, gambling, smoking, wooing women, relaxing on the beach, you name it. I couldn't find all the illustrators behind some of this amazingly 90s artwork, but one artist I was able to find is named Jerry LaFaro, who designed not only a lot of Joe Camel artwork in the 90s, but is responsible for a lot of those super sick animal t-shirts everyone had back in the day. My boyfriend loves this stuff, and I felt compelled to get him a new dinosaur shirt, and I got myself this incredible polar bear t-shirt. It's perfect because it's a blend of funky 90s animal art shirts and Lisa Frank. It's just... Interestingly, he also did some work for Cheetos, just to make this transition from my Cheetos video to this one a little extra smooth. So needless to say, this cool camel was a huge hit. His face was plastered on billboards, in magazines, and all over the packaging. Camel even had a promotional Camel Cash campaign where you would get Camel Cash C-Note currency inside select packs of cigarettes, which you could then redeem for cool Joe Camel merch. As a lover of bizarre cartoon stuff, I kind of want some of these goofy things and the cool penguin salt shakers. Is that bad? In any event, Joe was super popular. Actually, he was a little too popular. In 1991, one parent was taken aback by just how popular Joe and, as a result, smoking had become among children when he was told by his two-year-old son, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a man. I want to drive fast cars and I want to smoke cigarettes. For dramatic effect, the kid was apparently also holding a straw and pretending to smoke it. Thoroughly disturbed, his father, Dr. Paul Fisher, a former teacher at the Medical College of Georgia, decided to conduct a simple study to find out just how prevalent this awareness of smoking was among very young children. In his study of 229 children from ages 3 to 6, Fisher found that Joe Camel depicted to the children as just a camel, not smoking, was more recognizable in name to the children than Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse, and 30% of 3-year-olds and a staggering 91% of 6-year-olds were able to match Joe Camel with a cigarette, the same percentage who were able to match Mickey Mouse with Disney Channel. Another study conducted by University of Massachusetts researcher Joseph DeFranza on brand preferences among underage smokers found that adolescents were 10 times as likely to smoke camels than adults. Even more damning, the percentage of adolescents smoking camels before 1988 was 1%, but after the introduction of Joe Camel, 33% of the students chose camel as their preferred smokes. Camel's market share during this time among smokers ages 12 to 18 
had tripled after Joe Camel hit the scene to 13%, and this jump in sales among the youth was coined the Camel Hump. Public outcry hit a fever pitch as concerned parents felt that children were being deliberately targeted with the Joe Camel character in advertising campaigns. R.J. Reynolds was quick to claim that the ads were intended for adults only and that they weren't targeting youth, though internal memos from the 60s suggest that reeling in young smokers to hook them at a young age and keep them throughout their life was definitely a strategy that tobacco companies sought after. Despite their best efforts to keep their cash camel afloat, a second major blow to tobacco companies came in 1998. The Master Settlement Agreement, the result of civil litigation from 46 U.S. states and Washington, D.C., against major tobacco companies, outright banned advertisements on public transit, billboards, paid brand product placement, cartoons, brand sponsorships of sports events or concerts, and advertising targeting anyone under the age of 18. This agreement effectively was the end of Joe Camel, and Camel quickly switched back to its more neutral packaging with the more lifelike Camel logo, and this change was also reflected in its Camel Cash campaign. So, cartoons were prevented from advertising tobacco products forever. Well, similar prohibitions haven't yet been put in place for e-cigs, but I think they're going to ban e-cigs before they ban the cartoon advertising on e-cigs, by the sounds of it. And also not regulated on treats of the uh, magical or medical herbal variety. Some studies show that the use of cartoons and advertisements increases brand recognition and makes non-users more likely to use for the first time. I had to do a little self-reflection when making this video since I myself have been commissioned in the past to create cartoon artwork for magical brownie types of things, not giving it much thought other than, well, it's a consistently paying good client and I gotta pay rent and saying to myself, well, kids can't buy these products anyway. But knowing what I know now about how insidious this cartoon usage and advertisements can be, I'm going to have to start turning these types of clients away. I see parallels between this debate about using cartoons and ads and the debate brewing around YouTube's policy changes. On one hand, having a separate place for children under 13 to watch videos that isn't plagued with disturbing content that stops gathering personalized ad data on child viewers is a great idea on paper. In practice, with regards to the types of content that I want to make, cartoons and discussions about cartoons can be for all age groups, and I'd like to discuss more adult animation on this channel as well. I don't want five-year-olds seeing videos like this about smoking cigarettes or a future video where I talk about, I don't know, Fritz the Cat, and the idea that that could be a possibility just because my thumbnails to a robot look like all child-friendly videos? It's kind of unsettling to me. In short, will these regulations actually help children? Is labeling all use of cartoon imagery for kids always appropriate? It's easy for a lot of people to say that banning cartoon mascots is just more government overregulation, or that parents should be deciding how their children interact with the world and products that they consume, and certainly it seems that there isn't a similar uproar about the use of bright cartoony artwork or straight up cartoons used on craft beer labels, which is a similarly adult product that can ruin lives just as well as cigarettes can. It is hard to deny the facts that children are drawn to bright colors and big eyed interesting looking cartoon characters, even if those characters are doing adult things like Joe Camel. There's even a push to ban mascots from being used to sell food products, and as fun as I personally find food and cereal mascots to be, people wanting a ban aren't without any justification. Will all use of cartoons be forever associated with being for kids, being child friendly? And when did this idea even start? Maybe that's a video for another day. But what impact will this have on everything from the products we buy to the YouTube videos that we watch in the future? I guess time will tell, but all I know is that cartoon imagery is a lot more powerful than we realize, especially when used to advertise products that are dangerous. And I think it's important to be aware of that visual power that you hold over a younger audience, especially if you love or make cartoons as a grown up like me, because these cute and cool characters really can do some damage if used for evil. So this video was a little bit more of a downer than the last time I did a mascot snapshot video, but what can I say? It's a little bit more of a downer topic, smoking advertised to kids. But what do you guys think? Where do you think we should draw the line when it comes to advertising these adult products? Do you think we should ban all colorful and cartoony things on craft beer labels and e-cig labels? We'll probably have e-cigs banned before the labels get banned at this rate. But what do you guys think? Do you think there's a, there's a line where illustration becomes too cartoony or too child friendly? What is that line? How do we determine that line? Where do you think we should draw that line as consumers and as people who care about the well-being of children? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to this channel. I also draw all kinds of artwork and put it on all my social media and the links in the description below. Thank you guys again for watching and have a fantastic day.